What's going on guys? My name is Bryson or you can just call me Ruzik and welcome back to another Black Ops 3 video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the Black Ops 3 1.13 patch notes that was just added into Black Ops 3 as of today. And in this video, I'm pretty much going to be skimming through all the patch notes that we got in Black Ops 3. I'm going to leave out some patch notes that don't really matter. So if you want all the patch notes, the link will be down in the description below. So maybe if I'm going too fast for you or you think, wow, that's kind of interesting i want to check out that more the link will be down in the description to the charlie intel article just click the link down in the description below and everything for the patch is on that page if you enjoyed today's video can you please drop a like the like goal for today is going to be 90 likes if you look down at the like bar and it's not at 90 likes go ahead and smack that like button getting it to 90 likes subscribe if you're new and let's go ahead and hop into today's video starting it off we have the four new multiplayer maps cryogen berserk rumble and empire with of course the new zombies map garage crow v this whole map packs kind of interesting it's just a whole bundle of different things that you can see in black ops 3 and it's a very good map pack this map pack is definitely better than what we saw in dlc 2 and i'm very excited for playing these four multiplayer maps and especially garage crow v starting off we have cryogen it's located off the dead sea it's a very interesting map the next map is berserk it's like this ancient viking village it's a pretty cool concept i would love to play this map the next map is rumble it's a small to medium sized map and this map is pretty much going to be raid for black ops 3 this map is definitely going to be the number one 1v1 map when it comes to black ops 3 i think that if i'm pissed at someone on black ops 3 i'm probably not going to 1v1 them on nuketown anymore i really do think that rumble has that chance to be that 1v1 map that we want in black ops 3 like i said exactly like raid from modern warfare 2 and then of course we have empire the raid remake from black ops 2 this map is really hyped up. I'm excited for this map and you guys should be as well. Like I said in my previous videos, Raid was my favorite map from Black Ops 2 and I'm excited that it's back in Black Ops 3 and I can't wait to put my hands on it. There wasn't really anything crazy that happened with this patch when it comes to the patch itself. It's not really revolutionary. It's just that they fixed a couple things. In this patch update, we have some changes to, of course, the glitches in the game. Of course, those were fixed. And we also have some changes to the black market and we also also have some changes to the in-game score system when it comes to black ops 3 including a new game mode the new game mode that they just added in is called fracture pick up core files dropped by fallen enemies and deliver them to the fracture site depositing the core files earns a score for your team the first team to reach a score limit or the team with the most deposited files at the end of the time limit wins the match so it's kind of like this kill confirmed and capture the flag mixed into one so just picture it kind of like kill confirmed and capture the flag when you kill an enemy instead of them dropping a tag it's like a flag from capture the flag and you have to bring it back to like the depositing site you pretty much just want to collect all the files while protecting your own site as well just so the enemy team doesn't come and steal your files as well so you want to be protecting your site from enemies while also getting more files for your site as well i imagine that this is a really fun game mode but it's nothing like big it's nothing that would change the game in black ops 3 it's nothing really big it's just a new fun game mode that they added into black ops 3 just to spice it up a bit they fixed the issue after completing a daily contract if the user backed out of the match before it completed they would receive a non-functional retry message in the black market and they wouldn't receive their crypto key reward until completing another match this actually was a big exploit when it comes to the crypto key glitch i did watch a few videos on how to do the crypto key glitch and it was this step after you complete your daily contract back out and then you'll get the retry message and once you do that that you'll get unlimited crypto keys so it was an unlimited crypto key glitch as well so i think that treyarch knew that and they fixed it with this patch they also fixed an issue to where if the user redeemed all their weapon bribes from their season pass purchase they were prompt with a purchase button which required an incorrect crypto key amount which of course is just a weird display glitch that they fixed with this new patch and which allowed you to access some things that you weren't supposed to inside the game but the biggest thing that was changed in the black market was actually the new look they actually changed the whole entire look when it comes to the black market when it comes to contracts supply jobs and everything else with the black market it does look like they change this because they are planning to add more supply drops in the game or adding something else inside the game but the black market does have a new look it's something refreshing something new because we have been seeing the same thing for months now and it's kind of refreshing just seeing something new when it comes inside the game even though it's just a visual update when it comes to the black market it does look like they are planning something bigger in the future and i'm 
really excited about that as well. They also fixed a lot of things when it comes to Codcaster. Of course, as you guys know, MLG and the Call of Duty World League, they use Codcaster to showcase the matches in Black Ops 3. And it looks like they did fix a lot of things when it comes to Codcaster, just making it easier for the person using it and making it easier to look at for the person who is watching it as well. Nothing really big there, but it does look like they made it easier for the viewer and also the user. And the one thing that we've been asking for so long now that they finally fixed was the uplink ball glitch. If you don't know, every time you picked up the uplink ball, there was this kind of jitter thing and your screen would kind of just shake and like your gun would jitter. Your character wouldn't pick up the uplink ball. You'll have to stand over the ball. Instead of running through the uplink ball and picking it up, you'll have to stand there for a couple of seconds and then your character will pick it up. Finally, they did fix that patch and I'm very excited for that because that's one of the reasons why I actually didn't play uplink that much was because of that glitch. That glitch would actually happen to me a lot and it was very, very annoying because it did get me killed a lot in that game mode and that's one of the reasons why I stopped playing uplink. So since it is fixed, I might play uplink a lot more. They also fixed the camo glitch in Black Ops 3 because as you guys know, we did have the transfer camo glitch in Black Ops 3. Once they fixed that, another glitch emerged to where every time you got off Black Ops 3 and got back on, your camos on your weapon wouldn't be there. So if you had Dark Matter on your gun and then you got off Black Ops 3 and got back on, the Dark Matter camo wouldn't be on your weapon and you'll have to put the camo back on. So they did fix that. So that's good that they fixed that whole situation up. They also fixed the issue with the Prophet Specialist with the Tempest. Apparently if you were using the Tempest and you killed someone with the Kinetic Armor, instead of losing their Kinetic Armor, they would just die instantly. So they did fix that to where it does take two shots if someone is using the kinetic armor and i'm guessing it was the same thing when it comes to the uplink drone armor as well if you did shoot someone with your tempest who was holding the uplink ball i guess it took two shots because of the armor that they have on so it does look like that they did fix that in black ops 3 it only takes two tempest shots to kill someone while they are using the kinetic armor and only one shot to kill someone who is holding the uplink ball one sad thing is that they also did nerf the banshee shotgun as you guys know the banshee and the rift e9 both of those weapons are pulse energy weapons so they were very easily to taking down score streaks like the mothership the rift e9 could take down the mothership a pistol could take down the mothership and i'm guessing the banshee shotgun did the same so it's awesome that they did patch those because those were kind of op so it does look like if you were rolling your banshee shotgun as your rocket launcher you're not going to be able to do that anymore it does look like you're going to have to strap on an actual rocket launcher now they also fix a glitch with the gi unit apparently there was a glitch to where if you called in the gi unit he would self-destruct before even touching the ground on the map so it does seem like that they fixed that glitch inside black ops 3 so if you do run the gi unit i'm guessing you'll have no problem with it self-destructing before it even comes in anymore. They also fixed the uplink and safeguard game modes. There were a couple glitches in there as well. And the last glitch that they fixed was the Redwood glitch on Search and Destroy. When you plant the bomb on Redwood, you were able to throw the bomb out of the map to where people could not defuse the bomb. So it does look like if you did this glitch, there's no way that you could lose a round. So they did fix that in Black Ops 3. I'm guessing that was really, really annoying and competitive. So I am glad that they did fix that in Black Black Ops 3 because honestly that is very very unfair when it comes to zombies there is a lot of things that were fixed in the map and when I mean a lot there were a lot of bugs and there were a lot of additions and fixes when it comes to just three maps in Black Ops 3 so there were a lot of things that were fixed in this patch like I said earlier in the video if you do want to read all the patch notes I'll put the link down in the description below I pretty much just skim through all the important stuff when it comes to multiplayer with these patch notes but if you do want to check out the zombie stuff check the link down in the description below but that is pretty much going to be it for me today in this video are you guys glad for these patch notes did it patch something that you were really really annoyed by like the redwood bomb glitch or anything like that were these patch notes good or bad please tell me that down in the comment section below dlc 3 garage crow v gameplay next video so look out for that and if you did stick around until the end of the video can you also put hashtag rosy gloves black ops 3 that'll tell me how much you fans are and stick around until the end of the video like i said the like goal for today is 90 likes let's smash that thank you guys for watching my name has been bryson or you can just call me ruzik and i will see you guys on the next one peace